hard for This meeting is being recorded. Thank you. Thanks for recording that. Appreciate it. Uh, get the meeting of the Hartford Brainerd Noise Advisory Committee underway. Um, Cheryl was kind enough to send out uh, an agenda ahead of time. The first thing on the agenda is the meeting minutes, which went out uh, earlier this afternoon. If everybody's here, who, all the members, the voting members have had an opportunity to look at them. So take a quick look. You all can take a vote on that once you've taken a peek. Kevin, I have one change or clarification that I'd like to make in the minutes. Um, it is about um, midway through that uh, larger first paragraph there. Okay. And it says, Mrs. Greenblatt reported to Kevin, reported Kevin Dillon stated. I just wanted to clarify that that was about the voluntary <clears throat> noise abatement path over the Connecticut River. And so I would like to just kind of amplify that to say Mrs. Greenblatt reported that Kevin Dillon stated that the FAA cannot enforce the voluntary noise abatement path over the Connecticut River. As and he mentioned that at a previous town council meeting. So I'll write that all out. You wrote that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. You want a motion as amended? Is there a second? I second it. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you very much. And Matt, I think we we'll turn it over to you for noise complaints for the last three months. Yep. All righty. Um, so we had. Uh, Two more jets than before. We had 11 complaints on jets uh, this time. It kind of goes without uh, explanation. You know, we've explained that a million times how they come in and you know, they're going to come in wings level. Um, helicopters, we had four helicopters and we followed up on I mean, their military, uh, Life Star, or not Life Star, uh, State Police. And those are kind of hard for us to direct the military which way to go and what they're doing because we really don't know what they're up to. Um, Bobby was following up just the other day on another military uh, Chinook that was uh, making a lot of noise and I don't know if Bobby you want to step in but uh, he Daryl is actually going to reach out to the military just to remind them. Of yeah I, if, if you want me to talk about that I spoke to the lady about the uh, Chinooks and mm -hmm. they were um, flying over the 91, which was close to the, her house. And I explained to her about the, um, you know, military procedures we really have no control over. But I did reach out to Daryl in the tower, and he was going to give the guard a call and just remind them of the noise sensitive area and was going to do everything he could to keep them over the river and away from 91 area. Actually, let me back up. Bobby is the new airport manager at Brainerd. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, can't see him. Welcome, Bobby. It's, it's really know, dark it's for you, dark. Bob. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> well, he is there. <laughs> I'm here. And, and John Moody is also new. Um, not new with CAA, but he's new in his role in aviation, uh, in the general aviation airports. Um, Yep, there he is. Um, and, and John will bring, uh, you know, a, a good bit of ability to um, access the radar tracking uh, for aircraft if, if need be. So we can Matt, go back um, and look. Up this, up. Is, this is Claire. Could you <laughs> please let me know? I, I understand that Bobby, um, what's Bob's last name? Pellegrino. Pellegrino. Pellegrino, and he's the new yep. airport manager at Brainerd. And John Moody, what is his title again? John, John what's your title is? <laughs> General Aviation Airport Manager. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep, so John's going to be over all the GAs, you know, along with Barry right now. And, uh, you know, Bobby's so is... going to be on site. So it's, you know, Bobby's going to be there five days a week, you know, on site. So oh, there you go. Bobby's got light now. 
Yeah, I turned the light on. <laughs> Which will help out a lot. Um, back to noise. Uh, there was 157 propeller complaints. Um, and I mean, we are working with them. It's, um, you know, it's a, you know, a never ending task trying to see what we can do to uh, push people, you know, towards the river a little bit more. And I've said it a million times, you know, when I get calls and it's every minute, it's, you know, the, the pattern at that point is full and it pushes people down the river and then they can't fly inbound on the river. Um, it's hard to explain. Other computer, but so they're downwind. coming in too, too, you're saying they're coming in too tight? No, no, that, no, no. When, when they're flying down the river, it, if you can imagine a rectangle with yep. the one long leg, the runway, and when they fly the square, they're coming down the river and, you know, which is about the spacing to the runway. And then they turn base, which puts them heading west and then final towards the runway again. When there's aircraft coming down, you know, towards the south, it pushes a pattern further out, which in effect pushes them over Weathersfield a little bit um, because you can't fly, you know, right at another aircraft when somebody's coming down the river. So, so that's that's one area that we have a problem with. And why is that an issue? Why are they Why are they going uh, at the same time? Or <coughs> it, it, would spacing them out be more uh, sensible? <coughs> that's, what um, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Huh? That's what they're doing. They're spacing them out. The air traffic controller is spacing them out. But the the down leg of the the down one is being extended out farther and farther south, <coughs> and they can't turn the aircraft in. And and so the aircraft are coming in more as a straight in. That only happens once in a while when the pattern gets the pattern of the airport gets full and the tower does everything they can to, you know, to accommodate all the aircraft, but also to, you know, to prevent it. They, they try to have them come in at different areas, but sometimes because of the traffic volume, they have no choice but to extend the downwind. So Matt, what was the total number of noise complaints for the period? 172. And, and that's, have, what's thank that? you. sorry. No, nope. and that's, you know, when, when I get a call and it says, you know, the planes have been call, flying over for the last hour constantly, I put a dozen in, you know, because I, I, I don't have exact number. So I got to make, you know, kind of a judgment that, all right, there's a dozen flights. Um, you know, it could be more. Uh, and do you, you have know. a um, spreadsheet for that that you could share I do. with us? Yep. Great. Would you mind emailing that to Bonnie Therian and then she can share it with the committee? Certainly. Thank you. Yeah, will do. You know, I had a few questions about that, if you don't mind. I've been on the committee for six years, so there's been many times that I've called the number. Um, what happens to those complaints? Are they compiled by someone in your office? Uh, yep, can I, I have can a, I say something? Oh, right, Bob. Um, now that now that I'm the manager there, I, I have uh, I have a secretary that's there three days a week because of COVID, and I am making sure that she e emails me directly as soon as we get noise complaints, and I am calling people as quick as I can, depending on how much work of a workload I have. I have reached out to almost every noise complaint that I have received since I've been in charge there, and. I've had a good reception from everyone that I've spoken to. They're very appreciative of the call. And I have also called out uh, a bunch of people, left messages and told them to please give me a call back so I can you know, talk to them. But I have usually don't get a call back when that happens. So I think it's good that now that I'm on the airport, you know, things can, I can reach out to people easier, you know, and you know, when you, um, who has access to this information other than you and the members of the committee, Bob? The noise complaints? Mm -hmm. Just the airport staff, airport staff. The airport does. staff. And do you share the statistics <laughs> with anyone outside this group? I don't. No, 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 no. Well, Absolutely. I asked. Unless, I mean, if somebody asked, 
you know, they're more than welcome to it. So it would be public information then that you would give it to people? <clears throat> yep, yep. Okay. Um, there was a, a <clears throat> comment made at a, uh, in several places that only a single person is responsible for the majority of the Weathersfield noise complaints. And that's why I was trying to figure out where that kind of information would have come from, because I think everybody listening knows that there, I mean, I've been doing this for six years. I know that there's <clears> been <throat> dozens and dozens of people who have made airport complaints. So I think that that misconception should of... be clarified immediately. There is not yep. one Weathersfield oh, person responsible for 81% of all the complaints. We have, even in the minutes, we have expressed our constant frustration with the fact that calling does nothing. I mean, it's 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 good for these meetings. It's a way to compile. <laughs> it's a, a way to get a sense of you know how bad it is. But I think that that was a very um, <clears throat> inappropriate thing to do to single out an individual and try and say that that was the source of all the complaints and to no, then I mean, express it publicly. I, so I've no got one it took right that here. Information from you, then they didn't yep, take nope. that info from you. No, no. I, on this sheet right here. There's, I don't know, 17, 18, maybe 20 residents. You know, so it's not a single residence. Right. That's why I so, thought. Oh, it was no, so, no. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I now, we do, have one anonymous, we do have one anonymous call that uh, I wasn't going to bring up, but it was a threatening call. So people are frustrated. Yeah, well, but yep, if you make sure. a threatening call, we we would have to call the state police or the <clears throat> FBI to go after, you know, to arrest them. So, you know, at this point in time, you know, we just want to let people know you can't threaten, yep. you know. Yeah, it, it made I mean, reference to coming in, shooting and blowing up people. Well, that may not have been somebody on this committee. It may have been. I don't believe it would be. <laughs> no, 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 no. I definitely don't think it. And I wouldn't make that statement. I just, you know, that, that one is not in the number of complaints. So when but you see this you. list, I did not count that because of the, 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 the way they addressed it. So my hope is, is that if you have the opportunity, you or Bob, as the person that really has the data right in front of them, that you will not allow statements like that to be made. Because as you just pointed out, things can be very ugly and people can be very angry and inappropriate. And to single out a, a single person in Weathersfield, you know, is right, really right. to just draw attention to something that is not not needed or wanted as a as we move forward and trying to come to some <clears throat> yep. of the minds on planes and overflights. So thank you. Please do that when you have the opportunity. Yep, yep, it's, been, it's been in the news and it's been in public hearings. So okay. thank you. Yep. 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 Um... That's pretty much what we had on the noise complaints. Oh. You know, Matt, Matt I, I have one question. Um, it's mm -hmm. regarding uh, the airport authority itself. Um, at the, the town council uh, a couple months back, we, you know, uh, Mr. Dillon came and, and kind of spoke to us about the airport. And one of the results of that was, you know, he had sent a letter to the mayor and the town council in regards to that he was going to engage with Brainerd and, uh, you know, talk to whomever, um, whether it be you or somebody else at Brainerd about some of the practices uh, of Brainerd and the pilots. And I guess what you know, <laughs> I want to talk about, get some answers to is kind of, you know, what discussions has he had with Brainerd and kind of what are some more like tangible uh, what came out of that in terms of how we can kind of you know solve this issue in terms of noise I and mean, what you know what kind of things were put in place in order to address some of the concerns that were discussed at that meeting I'm going to defer I, to Barry yeah Barry's one more familiar at, at the meetings he had <laughs> meetings with the um, the tenants on the field with the FBOs and, and the, uh, well, the FBO on the field and also the, uh, uh, the uh, flight schools. We had three flight schools and we explained, you know, the situation like we have explained to them over the years that they need to uh, do a better job in instructing their instructors and their students to, you know, follow the noise, the voluntary noise abatement procedures as well as they can. 
but just like anything, um, they have to stay within their skill level of, of that, you know, if it's a student, they have to stay within their skill level of what they do, but also if the performance of the aircraft, you know, if they can make that turn and, and do what, what the procedure is saying to do. There's other facets, you know, you know, Mr. Dillon, you know, and myself, we've always said that, you know, the safety's first with the pilots, they have to set up their plane to land at that airport in a safe manner if they, you know, and they have to deal that with the, the air traffic control, you know, getting their directions from them, but also they have to be able to fly that aircraft the way they think it's safe. So we can't tell them how to fly the aircraft, but we can try to tell them to, you know, be the best neighbor that they can be. And that is following the noise abatement piece procedure as much as possible. And from what we're getting from the tower that, and from, you know, people on the field that people are following that, we follow up with them on, on doing that. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be getting a lot better. Um, you know, there, we, I've been doing this for 37 years and, and I've been on this committee probably the longest out of everyone. And, and years ago, you know, there you know, I'm not saying the problem will ever go away because you're so, the, the uh, weather field is so close to the airport and you're going to, you're going to get traffic flying over Weathersfield, and you're going to get, you know, you're going to get some, you know, you're going to get noise complaints or low flying complaints. Uh, we can't stop everything, but we can mitigate it as much as possible. And that's what this committee was originally set up for is to mitigate it and to try what, you know, if, if something's going on, bring it up to attention to us and we'll try to see what we can do to, to mitigate that. Um, but it's not going to stop. You know, you, you're not going to stop everybody from flying over Weathersfield. It's, it's no different than any other airport. You know, planes have to they have a pattern they got to fly and they got to come in. They have to come in at certain speeds. They have to fly in the direction of the wind. You know, they can't, you know, land downwind. You know, they can't do certain things. It, it, physics won't allow it. it. It allows it, but it makes it harder for them to, to, them, to do that. And, um, you know, a lot of the people that fly into the airports, they're professional people uh, and um, they try to do their best. But sometimes, uh, you know, they, they can't, you know, they can't comply with, you know, at that moment in time, but most of them, you know, do comply and they're trying to be good neighbors. You're always going to get the people that are transients that we try to, you know, find out who they are and we try to talk to them. The tower will talk to them. We will talk to them. The FBO will talk to the people. The FBO has handouts, you know, with the map that shows the, the sensitive areas, you know, they pass that information along. So we try our best in that area. And, you know, that's what, you know, Mr. Dillon was, you know, talking to them about concern, their concerns. And, um, and he will continue to discuss that with them. And, and, and I'll continue and Matt and, and Bobby and John, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to do something. Go ahead, Judy. So in essence, nothing changed. And this would be for us in Wethersfield because the town council left it that we were gonna let the airport and Mr. Dillon make changes before taking any action. Things did change, because I fly out of that airport. I'm a pilot myself. There's so many airplanes that are following the noise abatement procedures there. There are, however, RNAV approaches that we need to do when we're doing training, and that requires us to fly in on a straight and approach. There's nothing. Who is who is speaking? So, Steve. Mr. Thompson, if you could, um, you're a member of the public, which is fabulous. If you could introduce yourself and let us know who you are, we're happy to have. I, you. I thought that public comments were to be held till the end of the meeting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, no problem. My name's Stephen Thompson. I'm 22 years old. I'm a member, uh, in Old Weathersfield resident, uh, also a pilot. Uh, for about five years now, I fly out of uh, Brainerd as a private pilot and instrument. And yeah, I just wanted to come in. People told me and they just said, you know, just uh, talk about some uh, opinions and maybe be able to help out or anything like that. But I think you have to hold your statements till the end. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Thompson. We appreciate that. Um, we have a, a public um, uh, participation towards the end of the meeting. And so just for this, th these few portions here is for committee members uh, only, but thank you. 
So this is Claire again, Barry. Um, of course, we're always appreciative of your efforts and all of the manager's efforts and Mr. Dillon's efforts. The fact that we all know is that it's winter, it's zero degrees, and the flight schools are not particularly active this time of year. Yes, so we would not expect to see um, no, they're, very active. Oh, they're, they're very active. They're very yeah, active. This is some of the best flying weather you can have. Well, the, I will tell you that air. Um, what I've been noticing the most is the jets, as always, and what we know is that, um, yes, we can keep constant pressure on the flight schools, and that changes as instructors come and go and what they're teaching, but the jets come in on instruments and have no other choice. So there have been lots and lots and lots of jets. As I said, always appreciate y'all's efforts, but um, that's um, only a partial solution. We are appreciative for it, but it's it's only a partial solution. Well, the the it's unfortunate the aircraft, the airport is so close to Weathersfield. Yeah, that's exactly it, the problem, it, I agree. But the airport's been here for a hundred years and just like Weathersfield has been there for probably just as long or longer. I don't know when it was. Long, but, yeah. but a lot of, you know, but it is a close area. The, 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 the region and the state needs airports as a transportation system, just like anything, you know, any, any other region. And this is how, Businesses do business. Yep. Well, so I, I think this is all um, territory we have covered month yes. after quarter after quarter after quarter. So why don't we move on if everyone else is okay with it to the next piece because we're just rehashing. Uh, operations, Kevin? Well, I think Ju Judy, do you have something? Yeah. I do. I just want to say that, yes, the airport has been there for 100 years, but 100 years ago, there were many fewer flights at that point in time. I know that you have said that the, uh, as in the 50s and 60s, there were more flights, but I think right now there are a lot more flights than when the airport opened. Uh, no, it hasn't been, but there's been more flights. A hundred years ago? Not a hundred years ago, but throughout the yeah. years, when you said in the 50s and 60s and 70s, yeah. there's been a lot, of, a lot of aircraft going. But now we're not here to argue that point. We're here to, to, to solve a, an issue that's been ongoing for you know, many years because right. of the proximity of the airport to, you know, old Weathersfield. And we're here to, and the whole reason for this committee was to help mitigate as much as we, we could, you know, and that's why the, the, the 150 study was done, noise study was done years ago. And the previous, you know, uh, committee members wanted that. And, and at that time, that's, you know, the noise, 150 study came up with recommendations and we've been following those recommendations. And, you know, you know, per the 150 study, it doesn't show that the, the noise that goes beyond 65 decibels goes outside the airport. It does under certain, you know, times, but it's average, the federal government does a day night average and, 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 every, and all the noise is, is confined to the airport. It still doesn't relieve, you know, the neighbors of the noise that they hear, you know, no difference than the traffic going by or the sirens going on. It's a, it's, a, it's an everyday noise in a modern society. I just ask Barry, a quick question. I just have to. I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to call you on that one. Um, traffic and uh, uh, counting jets coming in and rattling the windows is not an everyday noise. It's not an everyday modern noise. So I'm with you the whole way up to that point, no, but and, um, no, and, that and one I'm not. So we may no, just have to agree to disagree, but it, I don't think that can be characterized that it, way. It, no, I, I understand what you're saying. And I'm not saying, there's, I never said there wasn't any noise. And, and I understand that jets do make noise, but I'm just saying in accordance with you know the regulations and, and the study, that's that's how they determine the, the the you know the average decibel level at the airport is through a day a day night average. That's something that's a federal regulation. That's you know that's nothing I can do about. And this is the same issue that all airports have around the country, and that's how they you know they try to mitigate it as much as possible. Thank you. Evan, do you want to move on with uh, operations? Anybody has anything else, we can go on to operations. <clears throat> All right. Um, it, it went out uh, with uh, the meeting information. Um, you know, it's the same monthly trends. However, uh, 
operations at Brainerd uh, this year totaled out uh, just under 63,000 operations, which is up from the just under 50,000 the previous year. So we're up about 26.8% in operations at Brainerd for this year, which puts us, you know, trending upward the last three years. It was a uh, 14%, then 2%, now the 26, almost 27% this year. The four years prior to that, it was down four years in a row. Um, so we're back to where we were um, between uh, the years 2012 and 2013, that operation level. Um, so th there is an upward trend right now for the operations. And, you know, we, we've said that before previous meetings, who would have figured that uh, COVID would get everybody uh, out learning how to fly? Um, flight schools are very busy. What percent of your operations would you say are generated by the flight schools? Um, oh, we looked this, we, we did talk about it. We John, were John, John Modi, you, you, you had a, a number? Uh, it looks like the local traffic is about, about half, about half the traffic in the Brainerd is the local training. Yep. Local training being the flight schools, 50% is flight schools, 50% is local? Yes. A good portion of that amount, yeah. Good portion. I mean, you have- the numbers that I'm looking at for, uh, for, um, for the year to date, yeah, it looks like, uh, about 31,000 flights were uh, local flights. And a good portion of them are that, you know, you still have your tenants that are in the, um, <clears throat> the, hang the, the big hangers and the T hangers and stuff. So you're, you're probably looking at a good portion of that as being, you know, the, the, the flight training. And how many aircraft are based at Brainerd now? Mm, about 130 or so. Don't quote me on that. It's pretty close. Quoting you. Okay. Oh, you're <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> We're all on YouTube. <laughs> no secrets. Oh, uh, there's too many things on YouTube. <laughs> uh, Matt, anything else for operations? Uh, no, that pretty much covers the operations. Um, you know, you've got the graphs, so if there's any other information you want, it, you can dig it up. Uh, you want to move into projects, Matt? Yep. The only uh, real project we have going right now is the uh, lagoon um, that's uh, being transferred over from MDC for a safety area for uh, the runway. Um, so at the south end of the runway, there's two sediment ponds. <clears throat> One of them is getting filled in. Uh, because with their new system and the new tunnel, they don't need it anymore, uh, or the new processes. Um, so we had done a land swap a number of years ago with the MDC. And even though we had navigation easement over that land, now it's going to be uh, filled in for stabilized surface. So if, you know, plane goes off, it has a solid surface to sit in instead of a ash lagoon. And, and that will take ongoing. place over the next few months. You know, uh, yep. That's going to take place starting probably <clears throat> within the next couple of weeks. And that will go until the end of April, um, early May. Yep. And that will be done at night. Um, so there will probably be, a, you know, because after, was it midnight to six, Matt? It's, it's, yeah, it's nine, 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 PM, 9 p.m. to midnight will be a midnight prior to permission six. request. And then midnight to 6 a.m. will be a hard closure of that runway just for the equipment in the way. So you will see probably a, a difference at nighttime in the next couple of months. And a drop in operations a little bit. Yes. And so that's already been approved and it is happening. That's yep. happening. Yep. Filling in is, is happening. Yes. Yep. And that'll be Sunday night till Friday morning, you know, nightly. So Sunday into Monday. You know, Monday into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday morning, um, they finish their work and it's open, you know, Friday mid-morning 
through uh, Sunday evening. Thank you. Yep. Um, so we have next on the agenda, uh, agenda is other business. So um, I think maybe we can kind of go to public <laughs> comment here. If, uh, I think you know, Mr. Thompson's still here if he wants to um, say a few words. I mean, nothing, nothing much that I could actually think of right now. I mean, I like the idea how, you know, you guys are really caring about also other people in the community, you know, that there's, you know, noise complaints and stuff and uh, myself and I could definitely <clears throat> speak about the other pilots. We, we do try uh, our best to do, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the noise abatement uh, procedure when we're landing on two zero and zero two. Um, however, um, I don't also see how the small little prop planes when they're coming in on zero two make a lot of noise based on how, like I said, I live in old Wethersfield myself. Um, I do understand the jets, how people can complain and maybe how the little prop planes when they're taken off from the other opposite side of the runway um, that I could understand. So um, I just want to maybe see, you know, be a little filled in on how like the, the small planes like the Cessnas and Pipers make a lot of noise when they're coming in on the final uh, for zero two, uh, Brainerd. Go ahead, Judy. I, I will say that the small planes sometimes are noisier than the jets. They rattle, they, um, they're accelerating their engines and it sounds like a racetrack. So they do make a, I think it's time maybe to do another noise study and do it and Steve, I don't know where you live in Wethersfield, but in old Wethersfield, um, we are the, the runway for the airport. And as I say, the ch they're changing their acceleration and it's very, very noisy. Steve, I'm taking the minutes and I'm trying to write down, you said 0220, is that, is that south to north? Uh, runway two, zero, two, two zero. Is north. Zero two is north, two zero is southbound. Yes. So zero two is north and two zero is south. Yes. So the ones coming in all Weathersfield are on zero two. On zero two, correct. So when they're coming on final, we we don't even have our, our engines running. It's it's always idle close to like 1500, 1200 RPMs max. Thank you. Yep. And I live off of um, Kelly Avenue, off of a uh, Main Street in Old Watersfield, for those wondering. Oh, you're right in the heart of it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right on the final. So that's why I thought yeah. it could be some help. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with when you're home. You know, I work from home and I have <laughs> Zooms where, you know, I have to close the windows because the people on the Zoom are saying, what is that? No who, who's got foul echoing? And it's the jets and the planes going overhead. Uh, and I live on the corner of Maine State, not too far from you. Um, evening, early evening, when the pilots are up getting their evening hours, those are the flight schools people, and they do loops and loops and loops. Um, again, I think we have the ability to have some degree of pressure on the flight schools, and that does depend on who the instructor is and who you, that, that wax <laughs> and wanes. Um, but there are more and more rented jets that are coming in, and they come in on instruments, and they come in very low. They're faster but they're low and they're loud. But if you work all day, you know, you may not hear it quite the same way and then you're out at night and, you know, just sort of depends on what your pattern is. Would it be okay if I made a comment? Of course. Uh, thank you. Let me introduce myself. My name is Michael Tiger. I'm not a West Hartford resident. I'm, I'm not a Wethersfield resident, I'm a West Hartford resident. And, but I am a pilot and I do appreciate all your comments. I'm here today really to learn how I can be a better neighbor as a pilot. Um, I've been flying since 1983 and I am very aware of your sensitivity and I do go out of my way to stay away and use the river approach and try to avoid your town. I don't live in Wethersfield, but I would comment that I have a significant relationship with somebody who does live in Wethersfield on Broad Street. Uh, and I've been in your town for over six years. I've attended First uh, Congregational Church often. Personally, I enjoy looking up and seeing the airplanes. It doesn't bother me, but I'm a pilot. The comment I would make is that aside from the noise that airplanes make, 
you also have a significant amount of noise in town that's not aircraft. Uh, motorcycles, fire trucks, police, uh, your corn cannons during the summer are running all day. Uh, and interestingly, you have uh, lawn care people who make noise during the day. So I do recognize that airplanes make noise, but you are close to a city, you are semi-urban, you have a large population, and there are other sources of noise. It's curious to me why there is such an intense anger against aircraft, specifically when there are other noise uh, generators. That's one comment that I make. I do try to be a good neighbor, but I'd like to make one other comment. And that's about the flight schools just for point of information. I think it is correct that there is a lot of activity with flight schools, uh, maybe 50% of the flights. They do jockey their throttle as an effort to stay safe and keep altitude. I do recognize your concerns about how noisy they may be. Let me just remind people of the committee of one thing for information. Uh, the people who learn how to fly do so for enjoyment, but many of these people go on to become airline pilots. They get their private certificate. They become certified flight instructors. They keep their time at Brainerd on their way toward the majors. It is not correct that the people who fly the 747s in other commercial aircraft learn to fly in the military. They fly right at the grassroots airports. If that's the case, the flight schools are the people who are flying your flights down to Florida or across country. That's where they learn how to fly. They have to learn somewhere. And if you- Amen restrict the flights of flight schools, you're really interfering with the profound shortage of pilots that exist in the United States. Uh, we are proud to support our flight schools because they are the ones who go on to the majors and become your airline pilots. Not many people know that, but I just wanted to point that out as a point of information. And thanks for allowing me to make the comments. Michael, some of us uh, that learned to fly out of Brainerd went on to become airport managers. <laughs> and airport managers. As well. We all try to be good neighbors. We certainly don't want to interfere with weather seals. We are very sensitive to your concerns, but aviation is a part of America. It's an important part, and Brainerd participates in supplying uh, pilots for the community. And we feel no, that I that's an important thing. If I could just speak to that, I think that you're, this is, you know, our first introduction, but this committee has been meeting, I believe, since the 1980s. Barry and Judy, you probably have been here for most of that time. And so, um, Mr. Tiger, it's very difficult to live next to an airport. It is, it is an extremely intrusive um, neighbor. And despite all the efforts that people have made over the years, as flights increase or decrease and they fluctuate. I mean, Brainerd has actually had, had a long period of decline. However, it's still a terribly intrusive fact of our life that planes are going over our heads all the time. The, the future is even more difficult for us to imagine because the plan for Brainerd is to cut 40 acres of trees along our, the shores of our Folly Brook and in our nature preserve and along the Connecticut River and to expand that 220 runway so it can accommodate more jets, not more props, more jets. And we all know, and Mr. it's just one of those facts that jets come in on a straight line and that they really can't take a little jog out over the river and then come back in over that. So that's what we're facing in our neighborhood. And I think that if it were your neighborhood, you might be sitting right with us in understanding that. I wanna just share a screen with you if I could. And uh, this is something that I think everybody. Ms. Greenbolt, if it's uh, okay, if I uh, branched off of you when you uh, finish uh, your presentation, if that's all right. You can speak with Ms. Mr. Hill is running the show. So yes, I'm sure it is. This is the problem for us here in Weathersfield. And I think you can all see that. This is the acceptable approach. And these are our homes right here. And so that's why, regardless of all of the efforts to jog out. I don't have it. I can't see anything. I don't, you didn't oh, put you anything can't see up. it? I didn't no. share it? My no. fault. My problem. Sorry. Let me go back to sorry. this one. Screen share. Share. How about now? Oh. 
Still no. I don't see anything. Oh, there there you go. Go. Okay. okay. Started sharing, but it's up. Oh, there you go. Yep, is there it you sharing? Go. All right, yep. so this is our problem, Mr. Tiger. And for everybody else that's been on this committee, I mean, they know this because this is our life. I mean, this is the approach, and these are our homes right here. This is Old Weathersfield, one of the largest historic <laughs> districts in the state of Connecticut. You know, and so what we're trying to do is to advocate for our community. And the wonderful thing about Connecticut is that aviation is part of our DNA. And there are almost 50 airports in the state of Connecticut. We rank in the top 10 in terms of states with airports and per size of population. So um, the still, flight schools that you speak about could easily, people. could easily, the flight schools that we speak of could easily use another airport. We're not anti-aviation. So I just, I wanted to share that with you while you were here. And thank if, you for coming to our meeting. If I could just make one comment, it is not correct that there are 50 airports <clears throat> in Connecticut. I there agree. Are only 11. And Bradley is the only major airport uh, it, it is really not possible to consider that other airports can pick up the number of flight training <clears throat> Brainerd does. The only other comment that I mentioned, I fly the pattern, I fly the approach often um, to come into runway two. It's a very large swath of area that you have demonstrated. And if pilots are way over Weathersfield, they are flying the approach incorrectly. It's by far not necessary to weave over into Weathersfield the way you've demonstrated. That would be a poor approach. So I do respect what you're saying, but I think you've really created a, a to me, an incorrect representation of how things are for pilots. Wait, wait, that was the map that came out of the CAA document. That is incorrect. <clears throat> no, no, it's not. It's page well, 75 in the analysis of the airport. That Mr. was their. I shared. Mr. This. Tiger is correct. There are only 11 major airports in Connecticut and major flight schools out of New Haven, Meredith, <coughs> Robertson, Brainerd, and then Bradley being one of the major international airports. Now, also, I would like to branch off as you could also hear many of the jets that are flying over Hartford as they use the Hartford VOR to do the approach into Bradley when they go on to runway three, three and two, four, you could hear those jets more than the prop planes that are flying over old Weathersfield. And no, now I disagree. Well, I disagree. And Sorry, that's not what, the case. And what I would also like to say is kind of like how I, I believe Barry it is. The airport yeah. was built over a hundred years ago. So when people were moving here, they would know that they're moving next to an airport, especially if it's on an approach path to a runway. There are people here who don't have a problem. There's people who have an issue who would like to see, you know, a minimalization to it. But then there's also people, how you guys explained in the beginning, that are so strict about it. They, they want to make threats and really want to get, get oh, rid no, of no, it. No. That, our group does not make threats. That was No, I didn't incident. say about the group. I'm talking yeah, about that was people one in incident. Weathersfield. And we do not know who made that. No, so, no, of course. I don't want to say you guys in the in the group uh, did it. I'm just saying that somebody you guys said made a statement like that. So I'm just proposing that there's people who really want the airport, you know, completely closed. There are people who want to put in restrictions. And, then there's right. people and who so, Mr. Thompson, doesn't matter. You've, you've come to this committee, you and Mr. Tiger, and we are very happy to listen to what you have to say. But you came to this committee knowing that this is a group that's worked very long and very hard through this committee, quarter after quarter after quarter meetings against the noise that we have. So it's frankly unlikely, and we all know this, of course, that the two of you have any ideas that we have not already discussed in terms of why we are of the opinion that we are. So thank you both for coming. Um, and it's interesting always to hear other perspectives. Thank you, Claire. Uh, on that note, does anybody else have any <coughs> words of wisdom or public comment? All right. Uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you all. Appreciate have it. Have a good much. night.
Everybody stay safe. Have a good night. Take care.